McCarthy is here. Kevin McCarthy is on a podcast two weeks ago. We had a conversation last night because we're doing something in D.C. in three weeks. And one of the things, I'm mentioning certain names. I think this guy's going to run in 2028. I think that guy's going to run in 2028. We're dropping all these names. And then we go to the new property that we have. I'm showing the whole place around. And he says, that name you mentioned, I don't think he'll cut it. I said, why do you think that is? He says, you have to realize, Pat, most of these guys are not battle tested. He said, that's the one thing most people don't realize, how valuable that skill set is. You know how Roger Stone in his book, he talks about the candidates of running for office. One of the things is like, you know, fame and, you know, followership and influence. And Trump had that early on and that conversation yeah. that's being had. And, you know, even... Pat uh, Nixon telling Trump, you know, if you ever run, I think this guy's going to be a president. Yep. Richard Nixon saying, I think yep. you're going to be a president one day if you run, right? You know, you've both done this, right? Which as a kid watching dad, and now you're your own man and you're seeing it as a grown man who's seen a bunch of you. you got a family, you're married to an incredible woman who's tough, who's strong, who is independent, who's got a very influential role right now yeah. that, you know... She, you know, she's not one that can be pushed around. You can't be so. To the average person that's watching this, you know, there's a cu couple podcasters that can't handle the pressure that comes with doing a podcast. I'm going to leave because it's so hard. You think this is hard? Does she do? So how do you become battle tested? When you look at somebody as an opponent that's going through, like, I don't know, that guy's going to be able to handle criticism. What are qualities of battle-tested guys? Well, I think you have to go into that battle a lot of times, right? And 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 I think we probably face that battle every single day, but... I, I got to bring you back to The Apprentice for a second because I, I saw this from a really early age. We got thrown on that show super early. I did seven, eight seasons, and, and I'll never forget. I'd, I'd sit there. You had all the Celebrity Apprentice, right? And you'd have a hundred cameras. NBC. This is primetime shows. They literally kept NBC alive. The irony of the fact that The Apprentice kept the NBC alive and now they kill us every single day is like you know shocking to me. But you'd have thirty cameras. You know, you'd have a couple on each candidate, and you'd have a few on my father. You'd have the big booms that were going up in the air. And you'd have one of these major CEOs from one of these companies come in. You know, do you generally know how you're going to deliver the task, sir? Fortune 500 CEO, I'm I'm battle tested. I'm 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 hardened. I will I will deliver. And literally, all of a sudden, you know. So what do you think, John? The lights all flick on, and they just turn to absolute mush. And and what's interesting is, <laughs> never think that those top CEOs in this this you know this country are the tough ones, are the ones with spine. I've seen people that you would have never thought had an ounce of spine who are the toughest bastards in the world. And I've seen people who are otherwise put up on the pedestal, right? Top people in government, top people in in, in commerce, so who true. literally melted like a, a freaking marshmallow. I mean, less, <laughs> less than, like, you know, my, my, my five-year-old daughter has substantially more spine than they do. And and it's uh, it's remarkable to see. So I, I think first you have to have it in your your genetics. I think you just have to have it. You know, be, first of all, be principled, right? You know, want to have a spine that that's important. Um, you know, and then and then obviously being battle tested over and over and over, where you finally realize to that you know kind of funny you know comment I made about that bad article that came out about that person. You know, it's it's you've got to finally realize it does matter, right? You put things in perspective, and when you start to understand the game for what it is, you know, I, I think that's when you really get the confidence and. Uh, and you grow that backbone. That's that's so important. But I know we're talking about twenty twenty four. But you've made claims that you may want to run on the future yourself. You you seem like you, you and and the way at the RNC when you spoke, I think you were second to the last speaker to the president, and he has to prove that agenda. Well, I've run events for the last twenty years. I've confirmed the last closing speaker right before me. That's yeah. not that's intentional. Yeah. I mean, whoever ran it, I'm not saying that person didn't decide. And I I, I think it was your wife. I, I don't know who ran the whole schedule, but no, there's only it, one it, person that runs the RNC. That's that's exactly <laughs> no, what I'm. Yeah, 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 but you understand what I'm yeah. saying. I don't want to step on anybody's toes because it's family and it's your mm -hmm. wife. But what I'm saying is, is there an element of you kind of watching this saying, "I'm battle tested, 111 subpoenas, you know, I think I'm gonna do something as well politically, and maybe you have the itch." Listen, guys, I care. Uh, what I'll tell you is, politics is just a shitty business, right? And, and I'm not talking about from the I, just from every. They try you try and do everything right. My father's probably the first guy that's lost zeros off the you know off his balance sheet. You know, look at look at Obama. He's a community organizer now. He owns the biggest house in Martha's Vineyard, right? I mean, it, it, something's really. I mean, Hillary Clinton. They had nothing when they came out of the, the White House, and you know, she was a senator for all these years, and you know, she's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Nancy Pelosi, her and her husband. You know, I mean, they make Warren Buffett look like a bad investor based on the fact that, you know, <laughs> it, you know, I, I mean, it's amazing. My, my father goes, listen, I don't care how much it costs me. I don't care how many businesses I have to shut down. I don't care, you know, how much I have to pay in legal fees. You know, I want to go in and I want to save this republic because we're going to shit. And, and um, you know, 
you have to really care. And, and we do as a family, we really, really care as a family. Um, it, believe me, we get nothing out of this. In fact, we get less than zero out of this. We, we've gotten shot at in every single way, literally and figuratively at this point. Yeah. Um, and so would I do it? I, I think I could. Um, I, I clearly love, I love the fight and I love everything that this country stands for because we have the best country in the world. There's no question about it. You do have to at some point acknowledge the toll it takes on your family. The interesting thing about us, and people often ask, why, why my father didn't run in you know, 2008 or 2012? And, and I, I always tell them that the real answer, right, despite, you know, we weren't ready. You know, he looked at me when I was 34 years old. He goes, I need to run this company. You know, I need you to go around this company because I'm going to be doing something else. And, you know, here I am as a 34-year-old dealing with the hundreds of subpoenas while trying to run a many billion dollar company while, you know, trying to navigate kind of the turmoil that's coming out of, you know, politics or trying to cancel us or, you know, um, harassing employees or trying to cancel business or harassing every bride who's trying to, you know, have a, a peaceful wedding at one of our beautiful properties around the world. I mean, th this is the games that they're playing. They put us totally under siege and, um, you know, it, it's, but that's fine. We, we also, we had that backbone. We had been tested as much as you could have been tested between the business world, you know, obviously the entertainment world, you know, being on camera, understanding the media and so kind important. of understanding life. Yeah. But we were still virgins to this whole process. Make no mistake about it. You have to be willing to allow your family to come into that role because they will be ruthless and they will try and take them out, right? And a lot of people, it's what we have to change about this country. You're going to have bad candidates who do a bad job for this nation if we can't get to kind of a place of, of civility, forget about the candidates, right? The candidates have to be big boys and big girls, right? But but I, I think you have to take the extracurriculars out of it. And um, and, and I think that's the only thing that'd be holding me back, at least in, at this point in my life. So in other words, yes. So, but let me, let, me go to this, <laughs> let me go to this other. The documentary, The Man You Don't Know, yeah. okay? We watched the documentary and there is a there is a scene which was very interesting. And again, the reason why I bring this up is I'm sizing everybody up who's battle tested. And if you're battle tested, the other guys are not. The list you got to make is battle tested guys, right? So wow. the, any of the stuff from Trump's camp is part of that camp. So in the documentary, I don't know if it was you or Don, but uh, one of the things is before your father makes it down the escalator, right? The whole escalator scene that everyone knows from yeah. that moment on and yeah. he's going down. Don said, we got into the elevator to come down. If you know what the the what he says, he says when we got in the elevator and we got down, my father says something to us. He says we're about to find out who's with us and who's against us. It was right? actually in his office. He yeah. said in it his, was office. his office right before he came down. He goes, you know, you're gonna learn, you know, two things. You're gonna learn who your your real friends are. Yeah. Um, you know, you're gonna learn that very quickly, and you're gonna see maybe one of the most vicious fights you'll ever see. Right? Wow. It, it's he was right. I mean, but in terms of learning who your real friends were. <laughs> I mean, we found that out quickly. Let right? me ask you, who was the, that you can say, yeah. who was the biggest surprise that you said, no, that guy's going to have us, she's going to have us, they're going to have us. Who was the biggest one that you could say they thought they'd have your back that they didn't? Oh, one of my best friends. I mean, a guy I grew up with, him and his brother. Um, yeah, I mean, I literally, I did, totally deserted. And this was a guy, I mean, every vacation, every this, every that, I mean, barring and call, I mean, just uh, closest friend in the world disappeared like that. And then what's amazing is I had friends that came into my life who I didn't know from a hole in the wall. They didn't come in because of politics. They came in because they really believed in the fight long before. When the New York Times was giving us a 1.9% you know, chance of winning on election morning, they were there months before. We didn't have anybody, guys. We didn't have any, uh, we didn't have any endorsements. We had, it was Don, my father, myself, and you know Laura effectively out there fighting every day, right? I mean, there, it was very few people and a, a small ragtag campaign team that didn't really know much about campaigns. Your sister. You know? Yeah, Ivanka was there, and and uh, sure. but but I'm talking about a a very very small group of people. I mean, you know, I remember my father who was going to like New Hampshire or something. He calls me up. Megan Kelly wasn't a big fan of ours at this. You know, I've got a great relationship with her now, but wasn't a big fan of ours at the time. And he goes, "Hey, you know, she's gonna kill me on immigration tonight. Can you go on Megan Kelly and talk about immigration?" I go, "Pops, I built a freaking hotel. I don't know a <laughs> damn thing about immigration. What the hell do I know about immigration?" But I go, "Sure, no problem. I'll go on Megan Kelly and I'll I'll figure it out, right?" And and. You know, we knew, but but I'm telling you, man, I, I had people in my life that were the greatest disappointments and people who you never would have thought would have exited your life. I mean, lifelong friends, dear friends, uh, best friends, every vacation, growing up together from the age of six, disappear from your lives um, for really no apparent reason. Now, oftentimes it's 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 girlfriends or wives, which, which in, in that case it was. Um, and then I had people come into my life who didn't need to be in the fight, who got nothing out of the fight, who really believed, who had heart and soul. And honestly, I'll take one of them over a hundred of the others you know, any it's, day. It's crazy you say this. Like, 
20 years ago, I'm at Saddle Ranch. You know where Saddle, oh. not even 20 years ago, 99. What is 99? Well, Universal? Shit, 25 years at ago. Universal? Saddle Ranch Hollywood. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. We're at this uh, uh, place testing out the the, the mechanical, mechanical bulls, bull. just making sure it works. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're doing very, you know, it's like an inspection Due that we're going yeah. through. After a lot of cocktails. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, yes. yeah. Back then it was, even we were sponsored by something else. But anyways, <laughs> it, it, Jose, Jose was yeah. our friend back then. Yeah. Army days. You get out, you want to make sure you contribute. Anyways, so <clears throat> uh, one of my friends, Armin, God bless his soul, he's no longer with us. He was my guy. He's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, outside, picking on a guy that's 6'5", chiseled, right? Mm-hmm. And I was, he, he always liked the fight, okay? And he would, sw- he, here's how his fight was. You know what, how he fought? He had one punch. It's that's the first it, punch. That's it. That was his fight. If he missed, it's but over. But he wasn't the push, yeah. and then you push, and then punch. No, just punch. He just punch, and then you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Hopefully, friends come and help him out, right? So we're at this place, and you're kind of like, I see him. I'm like, oh, guys, we got to go. We go, and then it's 35 guys from the Santa Barbara frat, frat whatever they were. Yeah, yeah. The, Holy uh, shit. The fight turns into a brawl. And a one guy we all thought that was going to be there with us ran off. Wow. Cops come, we run off, we get in the car. Everybody's changing outfits so they look like yeah. somebody else. But in those, it's the it's only in those moments that you find out who's real, who's game, and yeah. who's ready for the fight. Mm-hmm. And there's something happened to the spirit. General Patton talked about this. When you go to war, you you learn about someone's spirit. Boom. Everybody talks shit, and then there's war, and you're like, whoa, you don't have it, bro. Yeah. That is insane. I thought you would for sure have it. Man, you are a coward. You just threw me under the bus in half a second. Damn, that guy's got it. Who are you? Yeah. It's such a beautiful Patrick, it's thing. it's cathartic. I always say it's, yeah. it's cathartic. And in a certain way, it's 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 it, it's a beautiful thing when you can see because you can get people out of your life that otherwise probably shouldn't have been there. You know, and, and, and right. And you can also it's bring It's a filtering people. system. Yeah, there's no question yeah. about it. There's there's absolutely no question yeah. about it. Some of the best friends I had came into my life and I, they would have never found their way into my life had it not been for... You know, for that kind of process, and then you lose others, but you realize it, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. You're, you're right, and and you almost need to go through it to be ready for the next phase. Which, listen, part of the game that's exciting to see that taking place tonight. It ends at midnight. I just want to re remind everybody: next week we're running a we're running a sweepstake for next week, the big game next week, Game Five in New York against LA, October thirtieth. And this is what we're doing for every dollar spent on merch vtmerch.com we got 15 new hats this is officially the number one selling new hat that came about we got a bunch of other ones there the polo shirts are going left and right but for every dollar you spend on merch up to a thousand dollars it will go into sweepstakes and then tomorrow we will pull a name and one of you will be joining us next fr- uh, next is the next uh, uh wednesday october 30th at game five and we're excited about it but it's again it ends tonight uh tom if i'm not mistaken at midnight do you have any other thing? And by the way, we'll get you one ticket. You'll be with us, uh, one seat when you join us. And on top of that, twenty five hundred dollars for flight and room. And Tom, maybe uh, if you got any other thing to add to it, with no purchase necessary for the PBD Podcast Twenty Twenty Four Baseball Sweepstakes, sponsored by Valuetainment and open only to legal residents of the United States and District of Columbia, eighteen years and older. Entry deadline again tonight, October twenty fifth at eleven fifty nine midnight tonight. For full entry and rules, visit vtmerch.com where you can buy the merchandise. One dollar spent, one entry in the contest, up to one thousand dollars spent. And you can also find it in the description for this episode of the podcast found on the PBD Podcast channel on YouTube. Void where prohibited by law. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.